in light of the fact that I'm going to directly contradict the headlines by the president of last week saying that we are not a violent society. Um, I believe we are. And in terms of the comparison to the rest of the world, the question I was asked is who are we comparing ourselves to? Are we comparing ourselves to anarchical societies where there's no law and order, where raping and pillaging is common practice in war-torn societies, or are we comparing ourselves to the more sedate Europeans like the Swedish? Now, the comparisons are very difficult to make because what are you comparing? Apples with apples, oranges with oranges, etc. So I rather compared it to what my expectation of living in a society like this is, and I'm afraid of the violence that I see. And the problem with being afraid is that, is that if you look at it on a developmental level, if we are in fear of our lives, of our safety, it's very difficult for us to engage in more complex debates around more complex issues because we are really worried about survival. And if I live in a place where I worry about my children and I worry about survival, the question is what do we do about it? And in terms of organizations like Women and Men Against Child Abuse, there is a real attempt to address the violence. So, interpersonal violence and why does it happen in South Africa? I thought, well, there's all these debates around why people are violent. So I researched the criminological perspectives, the sociological perspectives, the anthropological perspectives, the neurodevelopmental perspectives, and you come down to a very, a, a very simple dichotomy, and it's the nature-nurture debate. Are we just born bad people, and do we have bad genes that we have been given by virtue of being born in this country. And I can't believe that. So that brings me to the second one, which is nurture. So I thought my area of, of kind of influence and expertise is around children, parents, and families. And if I looked at the, the act of conception, there's a, a, a theory that we call the war cycle, quite aptly named, but it means the world of abnormal rearing. So if I am a child who is conceived in a situation where I'm not wanted, where when my mother um, is, is pregnant with me, she doesn't have the support of, firstly, the absconding male, because we always moan that women um, abandon their children, but often men abandon their children first. And there's a real lack of a, parental, a male parental figure, which Dr. Klein, I'm sure, will elaborate on much better than I can. And then you have a situation where this child is potentially not developing appropriately because there's not adequate nutrition, the parent may be abusing substances, and they're then born into a world where they are not really wanted and they don't attach to a significant figure. Now we hear all about attachment and abandonment and what does it mean? Well, from a neuroscience perspective, what it means is that the baby's brain doesn't develop the way other brains develop. There are lacks in the actual structure of the brain. There are changes in the physiology and there's changes in the anatomy. But more importantly, if you don't have somebody to attach to, you do not develop empathy. Now, if you think of interpersonal violence, what is at the root of interpersonal violence? My needs supersede yours and I will do what I like to you to have my need met. 